To be part of the military takes serious commitment, because it's not an easy task, as movies like Full Metal Jacket make clear. It's a career path requiring dedication, devotion, and most of all, discipline. But there's an argument to be had that some military training regimes push it just a touch too far. Have a look for yourself and let me know if you could hack it. These are the 20 most disciplined armies in the world. Number 20. North Korean Army We're going to begin with a rather controversial entry, but you'll soon see why we need to talk about this army first. Because, if I'm being blunt, one of the armies that many in the world fear to some respect is the North Korean Army. Now, in terms of their power output or the number of troops in their ranks, it doesn't directly match up with others that we'll be discussing, but that's not what makes them so scary in the eyes of many. What makes them so frightening is that they're 100% loyal to their dictator leader, Kim Jong-un, whether they want to be or not. Now, never forget that North Korea is a country that is ruled by fear. Kim Jong-un is only the third leader of the nation, and his father and grandfather ran it before him. The power that he has consolidated over the years and through his family is so great that the people of North Korea have essentially been trained to not even think about opposing him. In fact, those who do dare to try dissension are often dealt with in the worst of ways, if you get my drift. And in terms of variety, the North Korean army has the ground force, the naval force, the air and anti-air force, the missile general bureau, and the special operation force. Oh, but there is a twist with all of it. All of them are directly under the command of Kim Jong-un. So he literally has the power to begin a war with a single word and no one's there to stop him. That's the other reason that people fear this army. Their leader is so unpredictable that anything could happen at any time with him, and that's a good reason to worry. They've already launched nuclear missiles and have strengthened their border. So if they're going to go to war, they'll likely be commanded to fight until the last man standing. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This Asian army is amongst the most disciplined on the planet. Don't let the fact that they're all riding segways fool you. They're not having fun. The image was taken when they were in the middle of one of their more unique training sessions. The general of the platoon believes strongly in breaking soldiers down to build them back up stronger than before. And as part of that ethos, for several weeks his trainees are not allowed to use their legs. They have to ride a segway everywhere they go even when moving from their bunk to the toilet. It sounds crazy, but the philosophy is that it makes the men weak and too reliant on the wheels. And then, once these few weeks are over, not only are they robbed of their segways, but they're forced to undergo an extremely intense physical assault course, one that puts a great deal of emphasis on leg muscles. There's a lot of running and jumping. With the legs out of practice, the men struggle, but in the mind of the general, the approach of breaking them before rebuilding them makes them stronger and more disciplined than ever. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. The Indian Army India is one of the most populated nations on the planet, as they have over a billion people within their borders. That's second only to China, and they actually had the lead over China for a time, but that's another topic entirely. Given their large population, you may think that they easily have one of the best militaries of the world, but that's not exactly the case, or at least not in the minds of most people. 
While one of the heads of India has stated multiple times that they have the most disciplined army in the world, one has to question that given the events of the past several years. To their credit, India is a nation with a lot of firepower, and they have been focused on keeping forces from China and Pakistan at bay, but whether they can actually do that is debatable. For example, there have been several defense budget cuts, and due to their lack of focus, in some people's minds, they aren't fully prepared for a war should one come to their doorstep anytime soon. Furthermore, things like their Air Force are currently out of date. I mean, seriously, they're using aircraft that should have been retired many moons ago, but they're still using them instead of getting replacements. It took a skirmish with China to get them off of their butts to do something, and that's not exactly a good thing. Many would also argue that the tactics of India is too old-fashioned and they don't take into account the changing style of war that has been shifting over the past decade or so. It also doesn't help that they don't really have personalized units that they can rely on. All previous attempts to make such units have ended badly. So really, what's the moral of the story? Well, as cliche as it may sound, size does not always matter. Number 18. The Philippine Army now, whether you realize it or not, the Philippines has been a focal point of many wars and conflicts over the years, and that's not exactly a good thing, as it's also led to the people of the island chain nation being conquered and ruled for many, many years. But once they finally got their independence, they fought tooth and nail to keep it, which included making the Philippine Army, which has been in service since 1935. To give you some numbers, they have about 101,000 people in the army right now, and they have another 100,000 in reserves should they be needed. And as you might have guessed, they are needed. The Philippine Army has been engaged in many conflicts, which includes the ongoing communist rebellion in the Philippines, the Moro conflict, and alongside other national military forces in conflicts of international scope. And so they've been doing a lot of work over the years. And even though they themselves haven't been in a war for a while, they've had internal and external conflicts that they've been a part of. That means that they're constantly getting action and thus they need the training and discipline to get the job done. So while you might not have known about the Philippine army beforehand, they are someone that you don't want to mess with, especially if you're trying to take their home. Number 17. The Chinese People's Liberation Army. Oh yeah, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the People's Liberation Army. I mean, after all, it is definitively the biggest army in the world, bar none. But how big are they, you may ask? Well, they have over two million active soldiers, with over 500,000 in reserves. While it is true that other nations could put together that kind of army given enough drafting and conscriptions, these are all trained soldiers, and that should tell you everything you need to know about how disciplined they would be in battle. But there is a twist here, as there always seems to be, is that People's Liberation Army is not solely serving the people. It's ironic, isn't it? But the truth here is that the army actually serves the Chinese Communist Party, and that's led to one of the biggest problems within the army being that it's corrupt. Yes, the CCP has used the army in various ways over the years to try and further its goals, which is not how you're supposed to use an army. And because of how the country is run as a whole, you could argue that the army is being used to suppress the people versus helping them and keeping them safe. It's also important to remember that China is one of the few nations in the world that has nuclear armaments, ones that would go hand in hand with their armies and technologies. They also spend almost as much as the United States does on their military budgets. So if nothing else, China is dedicated to keeping its nation secure in the way that it wants, but that doesn't mean that it's being done in the right way or that what the government wants is what's right for its people. Number 16. The U.S. Navy SEALs Now I'm going to take a small detour here and not focus on the main armies of a nation, because in this case, we have the United States and one of the individual units that will help to make their militaries even better. 
I'll be doing this a few times going forward, so just be prepared for that. There are numerous Special Forces units within the United States, which includes the Army Rangers, the Green Berets, and of course, the iconic Navy SEALs. It's the SEAL teams that have performed some of the most important clandestine missions in United States history, which includes the stopping and of Osama bin Laden. Now, what helps to separate these SEALs from other Special Forces units is their discipline and drive to get the mission done. An admiral who oversaw a SEAL team noted that it's not about strength or even skill that makes you the best SEAL. Instead, it's about never quitting. It's about never ringing the bell to give up, but to instead persevere and get the job done no matter what. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a whole heck of a lot of training to go through to become a U.S. Navy SEAL, and there are very few who will ever make it all the way. Before you even go to the main SEAL school, you also have to go through months of physical and mental testing in order to show that you're actually worthy of the next steps. I won't even list all of the things that the SEALs in training have to do in order to get their official certification, but needless to say, it's a whole heck of a lot. The payoff is worth it though when they're done, and then they go out into the field and they know that they're properly trained for whatever may await them. And they also know that the person standing next to them in that same uniform Form is equally as prepared as they are. That's why SEALs get the job done. Number 15. Uganda's Army I haven't even really touched on Africa yet, so I'll fix that by talking about the nation of Uganda. It's a nation that many of you likely may not even think about, but it does have an army, and it's a place where, if you are undisciplined, you will hear about it, and you will pay the price for having it within you. Some of the nation's leaders have even called upon the commanders within the army to harshly punish those who haven't followed orders, or who may be acting out in disrespectful ways. Yes, it may sound harsh from the outside looking in, but you need discipline in an army, and that sometimes means punishing those who don't do their jobs correctly. Even with all of that stern training, they're also an army that isn't afraid to go out and help the people in their time of need. As you're seeing in this video, the soldiers have been dispatched to towns to help clean things up. And that's a good thing to see, as a nation's army should always come to the people's need, no matter the circumstance. There are definitely some nations that need to remember this with how they handle their own forces. Number 14. The French Navy Now, I'm not going to make any jokes about the French surrendering if you're curious, even though I would really love to. But anyways, the French, well, they've always had a unique history with war. They're either the ones who are doing the fighting and the winning, or, well, you know. In modern times, the French Navy is rather robust and they take the training of their future sailors very seriously. Every year, 240 young ones between the age of 16 and 18 will join the famous Mousset School. They board for 10 months, taking theoretical classes and learning about military life, which includes teamwork, discipline, and the meaning of commitment. Is that overkill for how much time it should take to be on a boat? Well, perhaps not. Boats are complicated things, and whether you realize it or not, you will need the right people on board to make them function in a proper way. So, having properly trained sailors is an absolute must. Number 13. The United States Army Now we're back in the United States, and it shouldn't be that surprising given the various branches of the U.S. military that have been used in warfare both big and small basically since its inception as a nation in 1776. And the U.S. Army, well, they've definitely been one of the backbones of the nation, as it's been in every war that they have fought in. And you had better believe that the U.S. Army knows a thing or two about discipline. Case in point, here's an excerpt from the U.S. Army Field Manual about the concept of discipline. <clears throat> Discipline in the Army is one of the most basic elements of war fighting. Its purpose is to train you so that you can execute orders quickly and intelligently under the most difficult conditions. Insistence on performing tasks properly enhances military discipline." End quote. Now sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle. Many people perceive discipline as just listening to the person who's ahead of you. but that's not the full story here. It's about getting things done properly and in a timely manner, 
and that can be the literal difference between life and death on the battlefield. That's why the United States, amongst many other nations that are out there, focus their training on soldiers to have discipline because the last thing they want is for a soldier to die simply because he wasn't trained properly. Number 12. The Pakistan Military Academy Pakistan is one of the several nations in the world today that has many eyes on them, and they're seen as a threat to many nations, which includes India, as I've already discussed. They know that they have to have proper forces in order to take on some of the enemies that are out there waiting for them, which is why their military academy is so important to them. Located in a village in Abbottabad, the Pakistan Military Academy is home to approximately 2,000 impeccably dressed cadets who emerge from the barracks each morning in graceful formations, preparing to undertake their demanding daily drill. Established shortly after the country had achieved its independence from British rule in August of 1947, the training facility would be created to subject potential officers to rigorous academic and physical training programs, instilling in them the necessary qualities for a successful army career. And clearly, the place works, given how long that it's been around. Number 11. Kenya Defense Forces You might actually be surprised by how many African forces that I'm putting on this list, but sometimes it's the nations that you least expect that have the best forces when it counts. Now, Kenya's defense forces is considered one of the strongest militaries and most disciplined in the world. The KDF, according to Global Firepower, has only 24,120 active personnel and is one of the smaller forces on the continent. However, the nation's strategic location also means that the Kenyan military has been highly active since its inception. It also helps that they regularly train with both the United States and the UK forces, and that's important because it means that the KDF learns their techniques and is able to apply them in the field. The United States also helps to fund their army, which is why they have more armaments than you would expect. Number 10. Rwanda Defense Force Some of you may know of Rwanda for the terrible things that have occurred there in its past, and that's why the Defense Force is so important to them, as they're trying to prevent those past tragedies from happening again. Like others on this list, Rwanda has a training academy that people, both male and female, are allowed to enter into, so long as they become part of the RDF. In one graduation ceremony, they were told by the president that their role was to protect the nation and its people and that they must be disciplined in order to ensure that takes place. Founded in the year 2000, the Rwanda Military Academy has upheld high standards of academic and military training matching the global context to cope with contemporary security challenges and threats. In other words, they're making sure that their new soldiers can handle what's out there in the world, and that's something that we should all appreciate. Number 9. The Italian Army Italy is a fascinating place to look into when you talk about military history. I mean, after all, it was where the various Roman republics and empires called home, and it was also one of the key Axis powers during World War II. However, today, the Italian army is a bit more docile, not that they couldn't put up with a fight if they need to. Arguably, the biggest problem with the Italian army is not its lack of discipline, it's an overabundance of reforms over the years. And by that, I mean that the army has changed a great many of times due to new guidelines both within the country and outside of it. By the year 2018, they had less than 100,000 soldiers in their ranks, and it's possible that they have even less than that now. Sometimes change is a good thing, so long as it doesn't cost the people in the end. Number 8. Nigerian Army At this point, you're definitely getting the impression that these armies take discipline quite seriously, right? Well, that's a good thing because it's absolutely true, and if you need more proof of that, you need only to look at the Nigerian army. They not only teach their soldiers discipline, but they feel that it's the bedrock of their army. They even have a drill that they do to ensure that they know the soldiers are taking their discipline seriously. Mr. Arm has been invited by the 
Chief of Administration. And I'm pretty sure they'll get punished if they don't perform up to expectation. Another thing that they love to promote is synergy, not only within their army, but with the other branches of the military and others that they might end up working with. And that's a good thing to teach as well, because people need to be able to work together in high stress situations, and that's not always easy to do if you don't have any discipline. Number 7. Israel's Shayatet 13. Now, if we were to go and select a nation that might have the overall best military, despite not having the biggest of numbers, it would probably be Israel. After all, they're known for the protection of their nation from threats, and they've not been conquered in the modern age. There's a good reason for that. One of them would be the Shayatet. 13. They are one of the special forces units of that nation, in this case with the Navy, and they specialize in sea-to-land incursions, counterterrorism, sabotage, maritime intelligence gathering, maritime hostage rescue, and boarding. The unit is trained for sea, air, and land action, so in other words, they're also a unit that can get it done, and it takes about 20 months plus weapons training to prove that you're ready for their ranks. They're also one of the most secretive units in the world, and that is food for thought. Number 6. South African Special Forces Brigade Any who have been to or heard of some of the things that go on in South Africa know that it can be a very dangerous place, and so having the units that are necessary to maintain the peace within the country can be vital. Enter the South African Special Forces Brigade, which is their version of the U.S. Navy SEALs or any other highly trained unit. They specialize in counterinsurgency, long-range reconnaissance, unconventional warfare, special operations, hostage rescue, concerning the importance of the ground, and direct action operations. The group has actually been in use in various forms, going all the way back to the 1960s, and they've built up a reputation and the people in the government have taken notice of it. The training to get into this group is so severe that it's said only one or two out of every 120 pass, and that's at best. Sometimes nobody passes at all, which further shows how elite this group really is. Number 5. Russian Spetsnaz as I've already discussed, within each army there are special forces units that are sent to do the toughest of missions or the dirtiest of jobs. And for the Russians, who have been in a war with a certain nation for some time now, the Spetsnaz are their ace in the hole when they need to get the job done quickly or in a more ruthless manner, shall we say. To put it into context, they'd be like the Russian versions of the United States Navy SEALs or the Green Berets, and there are some who would argue that the Spetsnaz are tougher and more dangerous than either of those groups combined because of the disciplines that they have been taught. For example, in the days of World War I, when the group was first put to use, they were meant to be a sabotage unit, and then as the wars would continue and tactics would change, they were basically the tip of the spear for the Russian espionage and intelligence divisions. They were trained to be proficient with many weapons, being able to use various tactics, and also to rely on instincts in key moments in order to help get the job done. They were also well trained to endure pain in various ways, which includes being punched and kicked by their instructors so that they could learn to endure torture and whatever else an enemy combatant might be able to throw at them. And while they may not be as prevalent today, even with a new war going on, they're still a very dangerous unit and they've garnered respect from other nations over the years. That also includes from the Green Berets. They teamed up with the Spetsnaz for a special assignment and even the Green Berets were impressed by how tactically sound, in shape, and effective that the group was that they worked with. It's very easy to hate Russia for a whole lot of reasons, but you can't deny that they know how to put together a military unit. Number 4 the South Korean Army. Now, I started off this list by talking about the North Korean Army and the various problems that their military can cause, but as pretty much everyone knows, if they were to go and begin a war, they would not immediately take on the superpowers of the United States, England, or somebody else who's in opposition to them in the past. They'd simply go look to their neighbors in the South, who they've been threatening to conquer for well over 70 years. North and South Korea, in many ways, is a tale of night and day. While North Korea basically imprisons its people, South Korea is an entertainment mecca 
and places like Seoul are hailed as being one of the most wondrous and beautiful in the whole entire world. And so you may be thinking that they don't really have any kind of meaningful military to fight with. But you would be wrong, and that's where their discipline comes into play. South Korea requires all able-bodied men between the ages of 18 and 35 to complete at least 21 months in the military as a deterrent to the North Korean aggressions. That's right, the nation basically has their own kind of draft, which requires their citizens to learn how to fight so that they can fight off North Korea when and if the time comes. Now, is it really a fair tactic to use? It depends on how you look at it. Some South Korean citizens would likely willingly join the military, not unlike many other people around the world. But others would be lax and just enjoy what life in South Korea is like versus having to worry about fighting their northern neighbors. By initializing this act, South Korea knows that they will have a fighting force and they are very strict with the training of their people. So if North Korea were to strike, they would have quite the fight on their hands in the end. Number three. Japan's Self-Defense Force Here's another one that may be a little bit tricky, because if you know your world history, you'll know that after World War II, Japan wasn't exactly allowed to have a military presence. It was straight up abolished, and the nation couldn't even use military might to solve its own problems. That's why Japan's Self-Defense Force eventually came to be. It was their way of getting around that issue by stating that this group was not for offensive tactics, but to help its people in time of need and defend themselves when it became appropriate. A clever tactic and one that caused a lot of controversy over the years. The Japanese are very well versed in the art of discipline, but even they have had their troubles with SDF forces. That also includes various scandals and incidents happening at their academies. Number 2. Ukraine Army I'll admit that this next one is very hard to talk about as it's Ukraine, who has been going up against Russia and its mighty army for well over a year now. And when the Ukraine war first began, many felt that it would be over quickly given Russia's might versus Ukraine's downright paltry forces. But the irony is that the war keeps raging on simply because the Ukrainians refuse to give up. And they're making up for their lack of experience with perseverance and the desire to see their homeland being set free. Something that a whole lot of nations could appreciate in a whole lot of ways. However, that doesn't mean there isn't problems with this army due to the suddenness of the invasion and the overall lack of numbers within the Ukraine's forces. Many of their fighters are new recruits who have never even seen a battle before, let alone had any kind of strict military training, and that's led to issues taking place within the army itself. Specifically, there's been a lack of discipline from many of these first-time soldiers or those who feel that they need to go farther to drive out the Russian forces from their homes. And that's why earlier this year, the president of Ukraine would help to pass a bill that would enforce strict punishments upon those who deserted, refused orders, or did any kind of conduct that was unbecoming of a soldier. While some felt that it was too harsh of a bill to pass, their president noted that the only way they would survive the war is by working together and doing what needs to be done. Plus, doing extreme actions would likely limit their support from other nations like the United States. Given that the Ukraine people are fighting for their lives and their homes, it might seem callous to worry about such a thing during war. However, it's actually the opposite. If you don't have discipline in your army, then you risk coming undone when you need them to fight the most. Number 1. The Taiwan Army I hate to end this one on such a sour note, but it's important once again to point out current world affairs and what might lead to war, to the extent that they're almost always preparing for a war against China. Because the small island nation seeks independence from China well and truly, but China refuses to acknowledge them. The only reason that Taiwan has lasted this long is because of the army that they've trained and the allies that they have like with the United States. They constantly do drills to prepare themselves for what they feel may be inevitable, which is a full-on invasion from China themselves. That's all from the countries with the most disciplined armies and what makes them so great at what they do. Do you see now why these armies made it to the list? And which ones do you think are truly the best of the best? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.